We have started, we have begun. So welcome everyone, welcome to, to all of you. I'm Pastor Barbara Kane at Holy Redeemer Lutheran Church in Newark, California. And we will begin with 10,000 Reasons. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Welcome to you if you are male or female, or a little bit of each, queer or straight, or a little bit of each, black or brown or white, or a little bit of each, old or young, or a little bit of each, rich or poor, or a little bit of each, doubting or believing, or a little bit of each. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Thank you. 
strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore for God has come to dwell with us to make us people of God to make all things new now the feast and celebration all of sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory From 1 Kings. In the story preceding today's reading, the prophet Elijah flees for his life to the security of God's mountain. There, God reveals to Elijah that there are still other faithful people in Israel and commissions him to anoint new leaders, including his own successor, Elisha. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel, Meholah, as prophet. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Saphat of Abel Meholah, <laughs> who was plowing. <laughs> there were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed him by and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Galatians. <clears throat> For Paul, the freedom Christ gives is not permission to do whatever we want. It is the invitation to be what we could not be otherwise. The power and guidance of Christ's Holy Spirit produce a different kind of life, one marked by the fruit of this Holy Spirit. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you, however, bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are now not subject to the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified flesh, the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Will the kids come forward? We have a recording today. Pastor Tim has done your children's sermon. And you can watch it up here. So have a seat. time again. The children's time. So come on, get close to the screen, wherever you're at, get comfortable. Question for you. Did you hear the gospel text? Jesus says something that some, it might sound unfamiliar to some of us. He said this, whoever puts a hand to the plow, but keeps looking back is unfit for the reign of God. What, what did Jesus mean by that? Do you have any idea? There were a bunch of people around Jesus that day, and um, they were kind of talking to him. They were saying they'd like to be followers, and, and Jesus was describing what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. And then he said this statement about you know, keeping the hand to the plow, whoever look, looking back and the problems. With you. Okay, so now I'm standing up, and you see the blue line that we have down the center of our sanctuary? Now, I want you, maybe you can put a line at your house, wherever you're at watching this, put a tape line or maybe use some string or ribbon, put it in a nice straight line. Now, try walking while looking straight ahead on the blue line. Let's see if we can do it, right? Looking down occasionally, but look, I'm walking, walking straight, straight, straight down that line. Now, try this. What happens if we try to walk down the line, but we look only backward. So we're looking backward and we're walking and we're not walking a straight line. If we look back, we can't walk a straight line. We only walk a straight line when we look forward. You know what Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying that as disciples, as servants in God's kingdom, we need to keep focused on God's vision, on Jesus' vision for us. We can't always keep looking back. We have to look forward and go forward with this great news. Now, sometimes, yeah, we got to look and check the back just to kind of reorient ourselves, but we can't keep, we can't take our focus off of straight ahead, doing what God calls us to do. And Jesus was saying in our text today that sometimes the events of our lives, the priorities that we place, kind of force us to lose our focus on what it means to be a servant of God in the world, what it means to take care of one another, what it means to watch out for each other, 
We can't always be looking behind us. We have to look ahead. So anyway, I hope you got to try this at home. A line, a string, ribbon, or tape. Try walking where you're walking that line, looking forward, and then try it if you're only looking back. All right, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. There we go. Who'd like to carry the Bible and we'll do the gospel parade? You ready? So you want to stand up and who'd like to be acolyte today? William would uh, be going to New Zealand because his grandpa died. So, or who, who was going to be acolyte today? Did you? If someone will come and take the cross. Yeah. Please. And then you want to go ahead? Yeah. Go take the cross. There you go. And you want to carry the Bible? All right. So stand up. <laughs> to hear the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 9. Jesus is wavering in his commitment to his mission in Jerusalem and will not be swayed by pettiness. In a series of striking cases in point, he calls his disciples to a similar single-mindedness. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those of my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming up. Okay. Road trip. Road trip. For late teens and 20-somethings, it's a coming-of-age rite of passage, even really an initiatory pilgrimage into adulthood. Whether that road trip is a short trip from a town to a big city for the weekend, whether that road trip is coast-to-coast -coast marathon to see the United States in a jam-packed car or RV, or whether it's backpacking the Euro Rail adventure, a road trip is a step in finding one's unique life path. Even for adults, there's nothing like a road trip to get us out of the familiar, comfortable ruts and give us a new perspective on the world. Yet, road trips don't come with guarantees of safety and success. Road trips come with potholes and pitfalls. Road trips come with genuine dangers. Road trips come with encounters with the unknown, things that are unpredictable. And sometimes, road trips go very bad, even deadly. In this week's gospel text, Jesus stops, starts off on the ultimate road trip. It's his journey to Jerusalem, his journey to the cross. The world views this journey as the epitome, really, of a bad road trip. Jesus, in this road trip, encounters betrayal, rejection, torture, and death. 
but Jesus' disciples, whether it was the first century or the 21st century, view this road trip to Jerusalem as something quite different. different. Because though it leads to betrayal, rejection, torture, and death, this trip to Jerusalem also leads to resurrection and new life. It's sort of the triumph of Jesus' mission in the world. That journey, that journey to Jerusalem, literally transforms all of our lives since then. Now, in this morning's text that you heard, there are some surprising road rules. And I want to give you the four road rules that I lift up today. I'm going to summarize them and then we'll go into a little bit more detail. But the first one is to be on the road with Jesus isn't a break, breakneck super highway to success. It includes really back alleys and byways. It includes sacrifice and service. Point number two, there is no road map. We only have our relationship with the one who is the way. Number three, we have to beware because the road is filled with danger. Number four, you can't drive forward without a rear view mirror, but the front window faces the front and not backwards. We pay our debts to the past by investing in the future. What we owe the past is something which helps us, drives us through into the future. Now, let's look at the first one. The fact that Jesus' journey to Jerusalem wasn't going to be down some familiar beaten pathways of life. This was evident from the beginning. The Galilean Jews almost inevitably traveled during that time a longer route through the Transjordan to reach Jerusalem. They would completely bypass the Samaritan regions. And the reason they did this was because the Samaritans and the other Jews had a long established, well, you almost might call it Hatfields and McCoys. They had a long uh, a history of being uh, 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 at war with each other, of being literally excluding one another, going out of their way to not encounter one another. And the Samaritans really never accepted the importance of Jerusalem as its center and as its temple, the center of Jewish life and faith. For the Samaritans, they worshiped at the shrine on Mount Gerizim. And they also inter interpreted certain scripture passages differently. And yet, here we have in our text today, Jesus saying, as he sets his face toward Jerusalem, Jesus saying, let us go through Samaria. But even the Samaritans reject him. There's really no room at the end. They don't want him. They tell him to get, go away. And that's why we have our text today. We have James and John who go to Jesus and say, hey, listen, I know you wanted us to go into Samaria. I know you wanted us to do that. But they were upset that you were coming. Let's call down fire from the heavens and take care of them. They didn't realize they didn't realize that being on a journey with Jesus does not go on the road to revenge. It's a road of redemption. Jesus' journey to Jerusalem is not to prove how superior the Jews are. Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, Jesus setting his face to Jerusalem, is showing us what it means to fully be a servant, to sacrifice your life. The disciples, children of a loving God, Jesus is saying, we don't call down fire to burn one another. We call down the spirit of the, the we call down the presence of the spirit to heal, to lead towards reconciliation. Now, next in our story, uh, we have uh, a, a wannabe follower who's claiming to Jesus that they will go wherever Jesus goes, which brings us to road rule number two. As Jesus' road trip continues, he encounters others who think they might want to come along for the journey. The problem is the disciples didn't always know where they were going. They only know, knew who they were going with. The followers of Jesus, we as followers of Jesus, 
don't always know where we're going. We just know who we are going with. On that road trip in our lives, there's construction delays. There's bridges that collapse. There's flat tires. There's overheated radiators. There's flooded roadways. There's drop signals. There's lost luggage. And there's your credit card being declined. But as committed travelers with Jesus, we keep on rolling. The third rule is seen in one of Jesus' most shocking statements from today's text. A potential follower of Jesus asks permission before they follow Jesus. They want to go and bury their father. They want to go and bury their parent. This is a most basic, decent, honorable act one can do. Yet Jesus says some words which really challenge us. Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead. You go and proclaim the reign of God everywhere. Jesus is saying that to be a disciple of Christ means that we will sometimes, well, we won't, we won't necessarily get to establish what you and I think are the goals of our lives. It sometimes, it, make, it might not make sense, but we have to do what Jesus is calling us to do and can't always go by our guidelines or our objectives. It's a rough ride, yes. It's a roller coaster, yes. There are huge highs and gut-churning lows. But the good news of the kingdom is that Jesus has literally gone before us we know that there's resurrection and new life, and Jesus comes to walk with us as we move forward. Death no longer is the final stop on our journey. This leads to the fourth point of the road, rules of the road for Jesus. Jesus faced another disciple who says, I'll follow you after I first return home and say a proper goodbye to my family and friends. What Jesus is saying is, you know what? You can't always take steps backward. The journey starts literally when we leave the front door. And we must move forward. As disciples traveling the road with Jesus, we face the future no matter how harsh, no matter how challenging. So I want to ask, I want to ask all of those who are in earshot of this message. I specifically want to ask the people of Holy Trinity. I specifically want to ask the people of Christ the King. I specifically want to ask the people of Holy Redeemer. Are you, are we following Jesus' road rules or our own? Are we stuck at home? Or, and are we always looking back? The future lies ahead of us. Yeah, we look back to check what's happened. We look back to get a perspective. But our feet must be planted and aimed forward. Last time, the four rules, in case you forgot. Number one, to be on the road with Jesus isn't a breakneck superhighway to success and superiority. We go back alley we go with ways of sacrifice and service. Number two, there is no roadmap. The only relationship we have is the one who is the way. Number three, we've got to beware because there are dangers along the road. And number four, you can't drive forward without a rearview mirror, but the front window faces forward and not backward. We pay our debt to the past by investing in the future. And what we owe the past is to own the future. We must continue to move forward with God as our guide. Amen. Oops, okay. 
Oops, sorry, I have something in the way. Please rise as you are able. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, let us lift up our hearts and minds for all creation, for your church, and for all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you on our life's road trip to keep our hearts and minds on Jesus. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our God of gentleness, Strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain and rest for those who are fighting the fires and seeking shelter. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters that leave lands bare and water systems depleted and hearts filled with anguish for future generations' needs. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion 
especially during these many tumultuous moments in our nation and the world and in light of the conflict created by the actions um, regarding Roe versus Wade. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love and compassion. Protect refugees, all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. Uphold those who grieve, especially the Click family, the Yangle family, and the Maloney family, uh, and Maloney and Anna and family. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence through the loving presence of others. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God of grace, Amen. hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll take a moment as uh, Frederick place for us to gather bread and wine wherever you are in the room or, or whatever and we will share in God's body and blood.
our maker, redeemer, and healer. In the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the people of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, what all may come to know, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
close to the tambourine. It worked. It worked. Go in peace and uh, assurance that God is worshipped. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Thank you.